everybody and welcome to the Football Philosophy Channel. Uh, it's Saturday afternoon. This is a, a pre-recorded show that I'm doing the day before we play uh, Aston Villa at, at Villa Park. Um, anybody who's uh, who's been uh, seeing what I've been saying on Twitter, I've now joined Instagram. Uh, I've been busy busy these last 24 hours trying to get me way, you know, work my way around Instagram. I don't know. I'm not very computer literate. I'm sure a lot of people know that already or... Uh, I think a telephone is like a computer these days. I know it's only on my phone, but I am having difficulty in uh, getting used to using Instagram. I got talked into going onto Instagram by uh, by the Nepal uh, United Supporters Club, who have asked me to do a live show on Instagram with them. And I said, well, I don't know how to do that. I'm not even on Instagram. So they said, it's dead easy. Get yourself on it. And, uh, and one day next week, I'm going to do a live show with the uh, Nepal United Supporters Club. So hopefully Instagram will prove to be a little bit useful for me in the future. Um, I've already got over a thousand followers on it. I put it on Twitter yesterday that I joined Instagram and my phone went ballistic for a few hours. And it's, well, it's still happening now a little bit as well. And uh, you know, like I say, there's quite a lot of people already following me on Instagram. Uh, so thanks to the uh, Nepal United Supporters Club, basically, for twisting my arm to getting me on that. Uh, I'm going to go live with them at some stage next week. Um, once I know how to do that, by the way, uh, you might be able to say in the comments what you think about this. But I'm thinking about perhaps when I do my live show before before the live game, when I, I do like half an hour or 40 minutes when I'm talking about the lineup, don't I? And answering questions, uh, I might have that going out live on on Instagram as well as well as doing it live on live on YouTube. Don't know if there's any benefit in that whatsoever, but uh, that's what I'm considering doing. So to the football, uh, second is get seems to be getting handed on a plate to us. Uh, Leicester got beat at home four two by Newcastle United uh, last night, and that's all but made Newcastle safe at the bottom. I would say and. Uh, Leicester, they look like they're imploding. I noticed I didn't see the game. I've looked at the team lineup, so the lineups and Johnny Evans was missing from the Leicester Leicester team. Um, he, he's such an important player to him. He really is. Uh, you'll ne we'll never know now, but they may not have lost that game. If you, despite the fact that they scored four, don't make the mistake of thinking that I'm saying that Johnny Evans would have stopped all four goals. That's how some fans think. Just by being a little bit stronger, maybe the first goal doesn't go in and goals change games. You know, if Johnny Evans would have played in that game, Leicester City might have won it. And that's the importance of having having a strong squad as well. Um, so uh, they got beat 4-2. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a good look at the table later, but just very, very quickly, we're on 67 points and Leicester are on 63 points. And as we speak at the moment, we've got two games in hand on them. Plus, they've still got to play Chelsea. So although Chelsea are in fourth, they both can't pick up maximum points. So uh, it's looking pretty much to me like second is, is, is being handed on a plate. We've got this Aston Villa game tomorrow. Should we win tomorrow, we will move to seven points clear of Leicester. Uh, Chelsea plays City today. Even if Chelsea managed to win that, we'd be six points clear of Chelsea and seven points clear of Leicester. So uh, it's an important game for United to win. But obviously they've got this uh, fixture pile up now with the Liverpool game being postponed last week. They've got Liverpool to play on Thursday and they've got Leicester to play on Tuesday. So, so how should he approach that game? The way, the way I think that the, 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 this run, how should he approach this run? The way I think he should approach this run is we've been used to playing two games a week all season. And generally it's been Sundays and Thursdays a, a lot of the time. I know we've had some midweek league games, but a lot of Europa League football as well. So we've been generally playing Sundays and Thursdays anyway. So we're playing Sunday and Thursday again. I would suggest we want to get the points in the bag from this Villa game. I know we play Leicester on Tuesday and they're the team that are challenging us. And I know <clears throat> we don't want to lose that game. Of course we don't. We'd like, you know, we do want to finish in second and that'd give Leicester a, a pick me up if they managed to beat us. But there'd be no point in dropping points to Aston Villa to field a stronger team against Leicester and then beating Leicester. There wouldn't really be that much benefit in it. Okay, there's a little bit of benefit in it if we beat Leicester, they don't get points. But there's no guarantee. You know, if they're, if uh, Johnny Evans, I believe, was only just missing from that game and should be fit for Tuesday. So, you know, Leicester might they're a good team. You know, they've uh, they've drawn with us in the league, they've beaten us in the FA Cup. So no matter what team we field against Leicester, there's no guarantee we'll get this is how I look at it. There's no guarantee against Leicester that we will pick up the points no matter what team we've got. So we might as well do our utmost 
to get the points in the bag against Aston Villa. That's how I think about it. Get the points in the bag against Aston Villa and then reassess for Tuesday. Now, on Thursday, we play Liverpool. And despite the fact that Liverpool have got no chance of catching us, I've actually looked at that. It's virtually impossible. that uh, uh, The maximum points they can get to, they've played 33 games, Liverpool, they've got 54 points. The maximum points they can get to is 69. And we're on 67 already. And we've got five games to play. It's almost an, it's virtually an impossibility for Liverpool to overtake us. So we don't worry about the Liverpool game in that respect. But obviously it is Liverpool. They are our big rivals. So, you know, no United fan wants to lose that game. I would suggest to Ollie that we try and get the three points in the bag again on Sunday. And, and, for, and just for the moment... So I forget that you've got a game on Tuesday. We always play Sundays and Thursdays. Let's field the strongest team that you think you can field on on Sunday. Let's aim to field the strongest team you can field on Thursday. Some of those players, or quite a lot of those players, might need to get a rest on Tuesday. If so, so be it. On Tuesday, deal with it when it comes along. But bear in mind on Tuesday that you've got Liverpool on Thursday and you want to field the strongest team you can. Don't risk players on Tuesday who you think then might be missing from the game against Liverpool. I'm sure if he wants to go with his strongest starting lineup, I'm sure at least six or seven of them will be able to do all three games. But make sure you get them all out against Villa. Make sure you get them all out against Liverpool and just do what you think best on Tuesday night. Treat it as a separate game, so to speak. That's that's how I would look at it. And the three points against Villa also, you know, putting your seven points cleared of Leicester, you know, you can chance it against Leicester and certainly a draw would be a decent result against them anyway. So long as we do get these three points and make a seven point gap, even if we drew with Leicester then, you know, and still have a seven point gap and the second place would be absolutely nailed on. If, if it isn't nailed on already. Um, so that's how I'd approach it. So what team will he pick tomorrow? I do think he will pick a strong team tomorrow. I don't know how he's thinking, if he's thinking like I'm thinking, but I do think he will try and get these points in the bag tomorrow. So uh, my my guess at the team tomorrow will be De Gea in goal, Wan-Bissaka, Lindelof, Maguire and Shaw. Uh, I think McTominay and Fred, but Fred did play the full game and McTominay, McTominay didn't even come on the park on Thursday night. McTominay will definitely play. Uh, Fred played played the full game and Matic played about 20 minutes. So there's just one spot there that I think might be up in the air. It might be McTominay and Matic. So it'll be McTominay and Fred or McTominay and Matic. I think Bruno will play again. I really do. Number 10. And I think the front three will be Rashford, Cavani and Pogba. That's the lineup that I think he'll go with. As I say, there's just the one there that I'm a bit, you know, I'm not sure about. Obviously, I could be wrong in two or three different positions, but that's that's my gut feeling. So I'm looking forward to that one. It's at five past two tomorrow to kick off time, and it's it's live on Sky Sports. Um, so really looking forward to it. I'd love us to get those three points and more or less put second place. It more or less put second place to bed. It it really would. Uh, West Ham fans must be on cloud nine. Uh, must be on cloud nine. Um, Leicester getting beat last night against Newcastle, which was so unexpected. Uh, Newcastle languishing near the near the foot of the league. Leicester, you know, like I said, they were chasing second spot last night. It was so unexpected. Uh, and West Ham are in fifth in the table. And. They won't have even been thinking about Leicester. They've been hoping to get into the top four. Obviously, they want to try and finish in. I know it sounds crazy, this, we, we, but they're so, we're so close to the end now. West Ham United have played 34 games. They've got 58 points. Leicester have now played that game last night. So they've played 35 games. They've got 63 points. West Ham play Everton this weekend. I think it's tomorrow. If West Ham can manage to beat Everton, West Ham would be two points behind Leicester. Who, who could have imagined that? What West Ham fan could have imagined that? Uh, so not only are they chasing a top four spot and hoping for a top four spot, but maybe even better than that, possibly even third. Don't forget, Leicester have still got to play Chelsea. I know, I know if you were a West Ham fan, you'd be over the moon with fourth. But I'm just saying, you know, they, if they can win this game, they'll be two points behind Leicester. Bear in mind, Chelsea play Man City today. Uh, Ch uh, West Ham are on 58, Chelsea are on 61. Let's say Chelsea were to get a draw. I mean, they might win, but let's say Chelsea were to get a draw. Uh, they'd be on 62 points. 
West Ham with a win would be on 61 points and Leicester would still be on 63 points. There'd be three teams there and you would not be able to write West Ham out of, out of a top four spot. But on top of that, Spurs were in with a chance of taking over West Ham today. You know, they were on, when they woke up this morning, they were on level games, 34 games each. And Spurs, uh, on the same games as West Ham, were two points behind West Ham. So could have could have gone in front of them today. And obviously they would have needed to win then to go back in front of Spurs, let alone into the top four. Uh, but Spurs have uh, just got beat by Leeds. Spurs, are, as I'm doing it, you know, not, 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 the game didn't finish long ago. Leeds have beat Spurs uh, 3-1 this lunchtime. Another, you would normally say a surprising result, but what a daunting run Leeds had when they looked at it a few weeks ago. In their, I think it's in the last five games they've played Liverpool, they've played City, they've played Spurs and they've played us, United. So, you know, how many points would they have expected to get from that when they looked at that a few weeks ago? And obviously we've had this Super League. I mean, the Super League, come on. Leeds have won two and drawn two. They've played up four of the big six in the last five games and not lost a game. So I say well done to... Uh, well done to Bielsa and well done to Leeds. And uh, as I say, getting back to the West Ham situation, Leeds beating Spurs today has kept Spurs at arm's length behind behind West Ham today. So again, if West Ham can beat Everton, they can stretch that lead above Spurs to five points. So I think that West Ham are almost... Look, they're not nailed on because Spurs are close behind. Spurs are Spurs are still two points behind them. They've still got to win this game, West Ham. If they, if they don't win this game, I wouldn't say it. But if they win this game against Everton, I would say that they're looking nailed on for European football and obviously still within a chance, within a chance of that being Champions League final. Obviously, if they beat Everton, they will be there'll be five points in front of Spurs with only three games to play each. So it'd give them a great chance. Liverpool are seventh behind Spurs. Liverpool have got 54 points. Uh, they've got five games to play. Uh, so as as we speak, they are four points behind West Ham with a game in hand on them. So Liverpool might be a team that West Ham could would, could still have to worry about. Obviously, Liverpool have got to come to our place on a uh, on Thursday. So that you know that'll be a, West Ham fans will be open and praying that we can that we can. Uh, beat Liverpool and keep them behind West Ham as well. So re I really am keen on uh, West Ham getting into this top four. I think it would be an astonishing achievement. Um, as I mentioned, City are playing Chelsea at 5.30. It's uh, five, Well, I didn't say 5.30, but it is at 5.30 today on Sky. Uh, obviously, it's a, it's a forerunner for the Champions League final. They've also played each other in the Cup semi-final. Uh, Tuchel's doing a fantastic job there at Chelsea. They, they knocked City out in the FA Cup semi-final. Uh, personally, I think Pep Guardiola um, slightly underestimated him. Who am I to say that he did that? But I think he slightly underestimated him in the FA Cup. I really do. He made quite a lot of changes in that game. I don't think he'll make the same mistake again. If City can beat Chelsea today... Uh, it will clinch the title for them. It's more or less done and dusted anyway. I do get that. Uh, I think they just need... Look, I think they need two points, City. At the minute, they've got four games left. Uh, if they if they win... if Sorry, if they get two more points, they get to 82. And 82 is the maximum we could get to. We'd have to win five games to get to 80. I don't think... Look, we'll win most of them, but I don't think... I expect us to win most of them. I'll be staggered if we win all five games that we've got left. I'll be absolutely staggered. And then on top of that, City's goal difference is so much better than ours. So it doesn't mathematically make it certain, but it's more or less certain that City will be champions if they can just get two points out of four games. <clears throat> if they beat Chelsea today, obviously, obviously that's three points from one game. So if they beat Chelsea today, they are mathematically champions. And I think they'll be going all out to do that. Once that championship's in the bag, they can mess about with the team a bit. They can rest more players so that they're re ready and you know ready to go fit and fresh for the Champions League final. So I do think the sooner they can win it, uh, they'll want to put it to bed. And Chelsea, look, no guarantee of Champions League football yet. As I've just said, you know, it's a, it, it's a big scrap for two spots between Leicester, Chelsea and even West Ham. Uh, and obviously Liverpool and Liverpool and Spurs, you won't want to give up on it yet. But uh, there's definitely a tough job just finishing above uh, above Leicester and West Ham. Chelsea have still got to play Leicester. 
So I think Chelsea will be desperate for a point. They want to they want to finish in the top four. They don't want to be going uh, to Istanbul. There is rumours that they're going to switch it to England, by the way, because of the COVID situation in Turkey. And I know the FA are in talks. They're hoping to get that game switched to, switched to be played in England, which would, would make sense. I think the Champions League in Istanbul, uh, the Champions League last season was supposed to be in Istanbul, but because of the COVID situation, they played it. I mean, the UEFA Cup that we were in was all played in Germany. I think they were all played in Portugal, the Champions League games. So it had to be switched. So they got this season's... They've only been not back a year, Istanbul. They should have had it last year. And now they've got it this year. And now they're talking about trying to get it in England. So the Istanbul Champions League final might be knocked on yet another year. So that'll be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, but as I say, this is a pre-runner to the Champions League final. City will want to put this championship to bed so that they can rest players a lot between now and then and be ready to go for that. And Chelsea, as I've just said, they are not guaranteed Champions League football. They do not want to be going to Istanbul or to London if it ends up getting played at Wembley, um, still needing to win the Champions League. So they'll be desperate for at least a point today from that game. It should be a cracker. I am going to watch it. It's live on Sky at 5.30. And then the big game of the weekend, United at Villa Park, 5 past 2 tomorrow, also live on Sky. I can't wait for that one. Uh, Jack Grealish, I didn't mention the Villa lineup, by the way. Uh, well, I don't often mention the opposition's lineups, but I do talk about some of the players. Uh, Jack Grealish, I believe, is back in training. It's good news for the... Uh, for the England set up for the Euros that are coming forward. He's, he's expected to play some games now, but I don't think he'll be fit to start tomorrow, which is which is a good thing for United, really. So uh, really looking forward to that. Five past two tomorrow, United and Villa. 5.30 today, City and Chelsea should be a cracker. I'm going to be glued to that one as well. I hope you've enjoyed that show. If you've enjoyed it, please tell all your friends. Please subscribe. If you didn't enjoy it, don't tell anybody. Keep stumped.